exciting to do recording with you. You know, it's all clear. It's a hot day here, but it's still exciting to talk to you and I hope you're all doing well. This session, I'm going to talk about where we are cognitively in the universe. And the question was asked in a kind of funny way, what's the cognitive state of the universe? And I was thinking, is somebody asking about, is the universe conscious? You know, are we the conscious element or is the universe itself conscious? And it's asking questions about us and as well as the state of the universe. And uh, then I realized what they really wanted to know was how well do we understand the universe now? What is a new area to develop? What might be big surprises for us? And the answer is, surprisingly, we know a lot about the universe considering that we haven't been studying it for very long and that we've all been restricted to being here on the earth, except a couple of people who went to the moon. Otherwise, everybody's been doing the work from here on the earth. And we're just depending on light and a few other things getting to us from far away to try and understand the universe. But we also depend on concepts. That is the idea that the science, the physics of how things work that we learn about here on the earth is the same in distant places. And we have a lot of confidence in that. Back in the early days, 100 years ago, people were discovering that atoms had specific lines that you could tell, you know, helium was discovered in the sun because it gave off kind of the reddish glow and uh, some other elements were first seen in the sun and rather than the earth and then tested in the lab and understood that we realized that the sun was made of atoms just the way the earth was and the atoms behaved the same way they gave out light at the same frequencies and we looked at distant stars the same thing was true and began to understand that we could think the laws of physics we learn here on the earth just like newton has that there's a universal law of gravitation that there are universe almost all the laws of physics are universal so by combining that and using einstein's general relativity we're able to have a whole theoretical structure in which and framework in which to put our observations and see if they all tie together in a logical way. And we have remarkably more than you would expect that the early universe tends to be very simple. It's the later universe that gets more complex. It's just like, you know, when the earth is forming, all the water is in steam, but then it comes down and it becomes water, it becomes ice, it becomes snowflakes, it becomes much more complicated stuff. The later universe is much more complicated than the early universe. And so we understand a lot about the early universe. We understand a lot less about how life itself is actually forms, you know, how the ecosystems had come up into being. But we understand a lot about how the first generation of stars came into existence, why there are galaxies and what they look like. But there's still a lot of work to be done there. We're, you know, that's why we were excited by the James W. Eston pictures of showing the stars forming, showing galaxies forming, showing us some of the early galaxies. And so the answer is there's much more work to be done studying the early universe. There's a lot more work to be studied, done studying how stars form and how they evolve, and even more studying, well, where's life? How's life developed? Where's what's going to go on? How many planets have life on them and so forth? And so there's a huge amount of work to be done in those various areas. And what we can hope is there's some other pieces of things we haven't discovered yet because we're, they're too subtle to be seen in a complicated place like the earth or just because we haven't thought to look for them. And so there's a bunch of stuff that I know what we should go and do, but there's some stuff that we've got to probe so we can discover what will be exciting to do in the future. So thank you very much.